Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Good to Know Shreveport Bossier. This is a podcast showcasing all the good things happening in our community, the Shreveport Bossier area. My name is Jeff Beinfor. Over here, my inimitable co-host, Paul Reeser. I almost got that out without stumbling over it. <laughs> He's a member of the Committee of 100, and every podcast we focus on topics and initiative that have positive impacts on the community. We have new episodes every other Wednesday, and you can find Good to Know wherever you listen to your podcasts. And Paul, as always, please introduce our special guest. First, I have to go look up inimitable. In inimitable. I'm sorry, inimitable. man. You know, I speak a lot for a living, and occasionally I stumble. Well, I appreciate I'm sure it's something wonderful if you called me that. So, uh, yeah, don't be so sure. <laughs> <laughs> so talking about great things in the area and the community, one of my favorite buildings downtown is the Strand. It's alive. It's something going on there all the time. Mm -hmm. And today we have the executive director, Jennifer Hill. Jennifer Hill. He's got, got me Jennifer. Yeah, yeah. Jennifer Hill, the executive director <laughs> from the Strand. Thanks for coming and joining us today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> because the Strand. You know, it's it's one of those, they, a lot of people say, oh, it's our jewel of downtown. It's this building and people drive by and look at it, but there's a lot going on in there. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, we have, first of all, I'm gonna say how lucky we are that this building is still, is in Shreveport at all. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of amazing to have some something of that um, beauty and, you know, in, in our, what is basically a, a fairly small town. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, you know, managed to keep it open. In fact, we're celebrating um, right now is our 99th year. Wow. And yeah, uh, yeah and still, per, you know, have a performing arts center. So we do, if you can dream it and it's legal, we can make <laughs> it happen. <laughs> I'm coming. <laughs> that's right. So that's almost a hundred years if I'm adding right. Yeah, That's right. well, you yeah, know, you might want to go check your map. I'm not sure. <laughs> That's very inimitable. <laughs> yes, we <laughs> opened in uh, 1925 in the summer, so we're going to start celebrating this next summer, and mm -hmm. we'll celebrate for a year. We're going to celebrate the centennial year up until... July the 3rd, Well, that's a pretty, I mean, that's a big deal. What, what are some things that you have planned for the centennial? Um, we are talking about doing some type of ball, you know, having a big yeah, kind sure. of, um, and, and we hope to keep, you know, ticket prices at a point where everybody feels welcome. It's not going to be mm -hmm. a huge fundraiser. It's just going to yeah. be something to celebrate Shreveport and celebrate the Strand. I love going to the theater. I love, particularly like musicals. So, uh, like, what's the favorite, your favorite show you ever had in there? Can you possibly narrow it down? How about top three? Top three. Um, Pippin was amazing. Okay. It was so beautiful. Um, we had this huge f fire thing in there, and I was back on row P, and I could feel the heat from it. Really? It was nuts. Mm. Wow. So that was one of my favorites. Gosh, I don't know. I enjoy all of them so much. Have you much. ever read uh, the, uh, the touring, uh, uh, just throwing this out there, Peter Pan? I, I've seen that. At the Fox in we've Atlanta. We've done Finding Neverland. Great. Finding Neverland, yes. okay. So twice, I think we've Close done enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Close enough. So the Strand, it's a playhouse. You bring in, you have a lot of plays there. I want to talk a little bit about, you know, how you choose the plays and what's sure. coming up and how many. But are there other things that happen in the Strand besides just the, the seasonal plays? We do um, dance recitals in the spring, so all the mm -hmm. little local dancers get a chance yeah. to, mm -hmm. you know, make their debut on the Strand stage, which sure. is very special for them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We do weddings, we do business meetings, okay. um, we've done Christmas parties. We, so that's why I say, absolutely. Really? That's why I say, oh. if you can dream it, <laughs> we'll make it happen for so you. So it's, it's a rentable venue that absolutely. people can use. And so, what are what are What's kind of the price parameter around that? How do you decide, or Depends how, how much does it cost? Depends on how beautiful you want it to be. Ah. <laughs> so we make money in several different ways. If you rent the theater, there's a flat rental fee, and then it, mm -hmm. you know, your costs are determined to buy the writer of the show you're bringing in, or how fancy your wedding is. You know, how many, mm -hmm. how many, how much security you need, how much, you know. Mm -hmm. So we make money off concessions. We make money off every ticket sold. We make, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. how, how do you determine, uh, like the, the, as he called it, the seasonal plays? What, how do you figure out the bill for the season? Well, I have a budget that is set every year by me and my board. Mm -hmm. And then I start getting phone calls from agents to tell me. And they know how big we are. They know what we can handle because okay. mm -hmm. we have some size constraints. Mm -hmm. We are a typical vaudeville theater which means we don't have much backstage, backstage yeah. room. Now I'm stumbling over words. <laughs> um, it's all his it's fault. contagious. <laughs> it's his fault. 
<laughs> um, and eventually I go um, to what we call APAP in New York, the American Performing Arts Presenters Conference mm -hmm. is in New York in January every year. And it allows me to see a much broader swath of what's available as touring mm -hmm. shows. We are what's commonly known as a roadhouse. Okay. Meaning they come to us, we don't build the shows. Well, that, yeah, no, that's what I kind of wanted to get at. I didn't know how it worked. I'm assuming there was something like that where you could kind of go pick and choose what you wanted or what we do. And the then we do. start negotiating for a price. Mm -hmm. um, we have to go mm -hmm. through their rider and see how much it's going to cost us on the back end because there's an artist fee plus whatever, it call, how many stage hands we need, how much security we need, how much, yeah. you know, catering do, there is, do all of those you, things. Uh, is that all local when you do all the stage hands and all that? Yes. Or does that come with it? No, no they're okay. all local. Okay. Well, yes, cool. so we have a $3.5 million economic impact. Nice. On our area, yeah. nice. which I don't think a lot of people realize. Yeah, we and, that, really and that's, do. From, that's from what they're paying to to rent the facility to bring their show here, and that's also from ticket sales, what, what all Ticket is sales, hotel rooms, people coming right. in from out of town, mm -hmm. um, people that come in and, and eat yeah. before they go to a strand show. Mm -hmm. So all of those things are worked into it. That number comes from the Tourism Bureau. Okay. Well, I told you before, uh, I'm from Atlanta, and I go to the Fox, or have been many times, uh, down on Peachtree Street. <coughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a, to me, it's almost the strand and the Fox are identical other than size. Sure. I mean, they just have but the But they're catering to a much bigger metropolitan yeah. area than we are, mm -hmm. too. But, sure. the, but just the feel of the, mm -hmm. of the venue and the way it looks and, you know, the era that it was created in and all mm -hmm. that. It's just, they're both really neat. I'm not sure what year it was built, but I'm sure it's very... Yeah, I have no idea. Comparable time period. It is, very much so. I mean, you feel like, other than the size, that they're just, they could be the same mm -hmm. theater. So. Well, back to the Strand. Well, they're, I'm making an, no, a, a, a excellent. comparison it's a, here. That's right. They're naturally It's very favorable towards the Strand. So. Absolutely. It and, is, and it is a gorgeous building. Quite and it inimitable looks, on its own right. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I'm thinking this might be a good term. <laughs> um, but it is beautiful, and, and lately it seems like it's been more beautiful. What, what are some restorations or things you've been doing lately? And speaking of, there's one really big one that I want you to talk about. There is, um, and I can start there. So we have been sort of chipping away. Um, I, I can start back a little bit. So when I took over as executive director, we had a pretty good chunk of debt, mm. um, which was terrifying. And right. and we, we worked our because way through who, that. Because who owns the Strand? Our, we do. We're it's a nonprofit. Not a it's not building. owned by the city. So right. the city is not taking care of this. Um, we get a little bit of money from the city every year. They, they split a chunk to the majors, we call it, which is the symphony, the opera, the Strand, mm. mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, but other than that, we're sitting out on that corner by ourselves, mm -hmm. trying to make money by bringing in art, um, mm -hmm. you know, taking care of the building, grant money, various mm -hmm. things like that, sponsor money. But so we've been chipping away a little bit, a little bit, basically since um, we announced in January of 2020 that we were out of debt. Now, congratulations. Think that through. What happened in March of 2020? You're right, the pandemic. So Great we were shut place. down for 19 months. Oh, wow. Just like everybody else almost, right? Just yeah. about, only we were not allowed to do anything. Yeah. So we furloughed all of the staff except for me and one part-time person. Wow. Um, so I scrubbed toilets and vacuum floors and did all the things. I'd learned how to do the books and that mm. was you know, <laughs> disturbing to say the least. Well, at uh, least you didn't have to have him <laughs> do your books. That would have been really disturbing. Oh, we could do it quick. <laughs> <laughs> but right now we're sitting fine. We're sitting okay. Good. And we, getting back to the point of this, is that <laughs> yes, so the big thing that we have just finished are the restrooms on the gallery level, which is the third level of the theater. Come on. Those That's big were. News. I know you hate it when I say that, but. Come on, that's huge. I thought if, you were going to stumble over it. If no, you've I, ever, <laughs> if you've ever been to a play at the Strand, uh, it's it's a race for intermission. <laughs> it is, and we did not only did we add um, a ladies and a gentleman's room on the third level, but we overhauled the lovely 1970s era restrooms that were already there. I had somebody that went at one of our last shows and came up, he said, I just went downstairs to the bathroom. It's so bougie, when did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Got a bougie bathroom bougie, down the strand, okay, come on. Okay. So that's a word I'll be using. Oh, that's so. the fancy way to say it, bougie. He meant boozy, I think. But those, <laughs> no, um, it's bougie. Okay. those gallery <laughs> level. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Bougie's the third floor. Yeah, sarcasm. <laughs> 
I mispronounced that too. <laughs> so go ahead. <laughs> Those gallery level restrooms have been closed since the mid 1970s. They, we just, they gutted them mm -hmm. when they were restoring in the 70s and early 80s mm -hmm. and they ran out of money. They had to reopen by 1984, by the end of the calendar year. Or they so there's a whole them. new level of restrooms. I'm sorry to, to stick with this for so, so long. So you but probably that's, used that uh, one of those bathrooms news. one night, and then it was like, do not go in there. Well, <laughs> and they didn't go in there for the next 40 years. Well, the problem <laughs> is I never go buy a drink because it's so hard to get in the bathroom. And now I would there's imagine more. your concession stands are going to go through the roof. <laughs> so, and, and, you know, to well, add to the... toilet talk going on here today. <laughs> well, to add to the funny stories of the Strand, as we were talking oh. about a little bit earlier, um, the first night that we had you know, those restrooms available. I went upstairs to the third floor just to kind of, you know, look at these nude bathrooms, it's so great. And I walked right past the men's room and we didn't have the handles on the doors yet. So we had to leave the doors propped open <laughs> and you could just see right in there to the urinal. And I went, oh no, shut the door. <laughs> Very bougie. You were under that night. <laughs> 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 I knew you looked familiar, Jan. I knew. I kept on walking, trust me. She's the boss. <laughs> um, well, let's talk about some funny stories. So it's a live theater. I thought we, oh boy, I thought we were doing well, that. Well, uh, <laughs> I mean, but uh, I, I'm a bit of a thespian from my past, believe uh, it or not. A bit of a what? Thespian. Jennifer, tell them what a thespian is. I know is. what I'm it not is. touching that. <laughs> I, was just, I was just noticing your mispronunciation of it, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> so I loved theater. I always loved being in theater, but there's always something whenever it's live theater that doesn't go exactly according to plan. I mean, you've had big shows from all over the country, especially come in, big actors. And what are some things that have happened that uh, the audience doesn't necessarily know about during the show? Well, we had um, several years ago, we did Seven Brides for Seven Brothers mm -hmm. and sold it out like really early, which was I thought was super weird because it's such an older um, musical. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. one, but I, I was kind of surprised that it sold out as quickly as it did. So completely full house. It was Friday the 13th and everything's going wrong backstage. But the funniest <laughs> part <laughs> was when a horseshoe, which I think was just like Velcroed to the wall, but it fell off and one of the actors didn't miss a beat, picked it up and just tossed it backstage, but it hit another actor oh. right in the crotch. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that funny? It's always funny. Every time it happens, it's funny. Because if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, did they, did I, they miss I the next cue? Would. Was it like, where is No, they just kept where's? right on going. The only okay. people that knew it was funny were the, you yeah. know, the staff. The guy backstage <laughs> on the ground. Um, we've had the, it's, it's so odd. So we've had Christian comedians come in with really, really full houses and, um, people vomiting everywhere. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> really? Like uh, actors like, I or think people in the audience? No, the patrons, yeah. Wow. I think they arrive hammered and then just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's very odd. So they had to pregame because they didn't want any of the pastures to <laughs> see them drinking at the strand, thing. that's right. Um, <laughs> we have fist fights. We have, you know, no it's kidding, all, fist fights. Well, it just depends on what kind of a show we have as to what kind of an mm, audience we have yeah. and how much <laughs> they've had to drink. Yeah, and you sell alcohol at the Strand, right? We do, so does yes. It, does it get rowdier as the night goes on? It's depending <laughs> on the show. Um, we have great bartenders and they know. Yeah. You know they will come to and tell me we need to shut the bars down. And that's their call. That's what that's they're good. supposed to do. That's good. Safety and they first. will. That's if, good. If the uh, patrons are too... Bougie. <laughs> bougie. <laughs> That's bougie. That is bougie. <laughs> what would be like if you could have any show in in the world come? What what would be your dream show? Um, I I think my knee jerk reaction is Lion King, but it's too big for our Lion King. our little theater. Mm -hmm. um, one that will fit that I think would be great for the community and um, would bring in lots of money would be um, Book of Mormon. I would like oh, to yeah. see that come. Really? Yeah, my wife and daughter have seen that. They said it's fantastic. It is. It's amazing. I had a son that lived in Salt Lake, so I just screamed in horrified laughter <laughs> all the way through it. Um, <laughs> it's amazing. So, But there are a lot of shows out there that are still doing two weeks only at a time, and we're kind of a one night. Okay, and that's kind of a limiting factor. Yeah, we're kind of yeah. a one night. So there's a new show out there on, on Broadway called Shucks. Have you heard of this? I have a ticket in January. Do you? Yes, My I wife do. and daughter just Very saw excited. it uh, <laughs> over the weekend and said it was hilarious. So she's from Iowa, and I'm going to, is it about Iowa? 
And I'm from Missouri, so there you go. Well, she, I, she, <laughs> Missouri. Well, and it, it was set in Cobb County, Cobb County, and we live in Cobb County. I'm from Georgia. Okay. We live in Cobb County, there you Georgia. Go. <laughs> well, I, really nerdy, but have you ever seen The Drowsy Chaperone? I have, yes. I love that show. I've never heard of it. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it fits you. Though. It's, it's very a very deep. old it's, one. Uh, it yeah. is old, but God, I saw it. I saw it in, on Broadway. <coughs> well, you're, um, you're a patron of the arts. Because <laughs> I got the half price seats. You know, you go down and you could get the right. anyway. Uh, but it was DS, excellent. Yeah, yeah. and and uh, there's just so many great shows. What are what are some things? Um, well, can't really be specific about this season coming up, but when is the season start and finish? Is it the same we, every year? Yes, we run like an academic year. Um, mm -hmm. So we tend to announce in anywhere from May to July, sometime in there, um, announce what our new season is and start September-ish <laughs> and run through May. But we own the theater, so we can put in things any time. Do whatever you want, yeah. So we do, you know, however many shows I can get for what I'm budgeted mm -hmm. and then in between we do we rent so, right. so when you do weddings how, do, how does the wedding work inside this room they they're can, not down on the stage are they they can they if are. they want to okay. Okay. yeah they can rent the stage and you know have the whole place we've had some beautiful christmas weddings on yeah. that stage yes or you can we can do them on the mezzanine which is also lovely for a smaller wedding mm -hmm. okay um and then do they also have the reception parties. down there do they just come down the stage they and can dance come right, right up away? on the stage and you can put the band in the orchestra pit. Absolutely. Nice. That is neat. Or right up on the stage in a corner. You know, it just depends. So if you think about going downtown, um, you know, a lot of people know this is a beautiful building, but haven't necessarily gone they, for, for a variety of reasons. But what's it like going downtown? Because it, are people are just afraid of the one-way streets, or how am I going to get around down there? So people are funny about what downtown. are some things people are concerned about that we can allay those fears? Well, we're on the west edge, so we're on the, you know, the the edge of Shreveport Common, which is a very safe part of downtown. Um, mm -hmm. We're far away from the, the noise and the lights and the bars that are down by the riverfront. Mm -hmm. right. And we have full security. We have Shreveport Police Department down at every single show. Anytime we have the public in the building, we have... Um, the mm -hmm. police down there to, to and it's very bright down there i mean it's very it's really well, well lit, lit um, after hours the parking is free in on the street and all the meters are turned off you can park anywhere you can find a spot after five o'clock and weekends sure right. and then there are some lots that might charge it depends you know mm -hmm. if they put their people down there or not it depends on who owns them yeah but it's it's you know you might have to walk a block or two but mm -hmm. it's not far there's yeah. a lot of people we have security at the doors. We have t-shirt security. Um, we do check bags when you come in the door. It's a physical check. We don't have the magnetometers. Magnetometer, wow, <laughs> hey. do not try to pronounce that, Paul. <laughs> <Magnus> thing. <laughs> um, so, and we ask people to bring a small handbag or purse, you know, not mm -hmm. to bring a large bag in the theater. Just, and that's for everybody's safety. Mm -hmm. Mine included, because mm -hmm. I'm down there for every single show. Are you really? Sure. Wow. Sure. That's we have a, lot a small of nights, huh? we have a small staff. Okay. And that the people that you'll meet in the office are the same people you're going to see at the show. Now we grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. You know, when we have a show because we've got bartenders and security mm -hmm. and more front of house staff and mm -hmm. stage hands running around and so forth, but there are basically 7 of us. That's a lot of work for 7 people. It's a lot. Yeah. But it's it's like kind of like a roller coaster. It go, you know, we're busy, 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 and then we're <laughs> contemplating our navels. <laughs> we're busy, busy, busy. So you hate to for the busy times. I would love to add more people, but that just means during the quiet times, there's more people being very quiet. Yeah. 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 So yeah. and we manage. So is this like so? I mean, obviously, you, you said you've been there quite a while, but you. Is something that's like a love you have for the theater and that's what gets you involved in doing this or is it a business thing or it is well i grew up here so i grew up here going to movies okay. at the strand certainly right. um when i i raised babies mm -hmm. when i kind of got through raising my babies i got hired by the shreveport symphony which was actually on the fourth floor of the strand so i worked up there for 12 years okay and then i worked um, briefly for shreveport opera for the revel and for shreveport metropolitan ballet and then mm -hmm. I got hired by the Strand. Wow. So yes, it is a love. I have been in the performing arts for 30 years, um, doing various jobs mm -hmm. at various different levels. Um, I mm -hmm. basically hit 
hit them all on the way up, and then they just finally said, boom, you're executive director. And I said, do what? Yeah. <laughs> We just says bougie. I think that's the country way to say it, but I didn't know it was bougie. Bougie. Yeah. <laughs> Jeff's very bougie. He knows this. And he's from Atlanta, if you haven't heard ten times. I, I only, like only twice. So. <laughs> Well, this is exciting. So this year, how many plays do y'all have coming up in, in the 2024 season? Is that typical of every other season? Um, it's actually a little bit bigger this year, and it just happened to fall that way. For Strand Presented, we have 11 shows for this okay. season, and 10 is kind of our sweet spot, mm -hmm. somewhere 8, 9, 10. And um, then we have a lot of rentals. The last year and this year, we have a lot. So we're, we're very, very busy down there. Okay. Um, thrilled, this is what we should be doing. Yeah. yeah. So when the show, how, how, what's the normal run time for a show? Is it like a week or a, a weekend? We're one or? nights. Oh, just one just night? One, one night, night okay. generally. Mm -hmm. okay. You see those big buses come through and they unload and as soon as the show's over, you get to hopefully get a quick picture with the actor and then they're, and the actors are like pulling the, the, the props gone. back on the trucks too yeah. and the buses. They're gone, okay. some of them, yeah. We are in the industry commonly known as a two truck theater. Okay. So we comfortably fit a two truck show, 52 mm -hmm. foot trucks. Um, we know this because when we did Blue Man Group several years ago, we heard their crew saying, oh my God, we just stuffed a six truck show into a two truck <laughs> theater. <laughs> and that's what I was wondering, like I said, Lion King is too big. Can they, can they scale it down? Can you just have like one they, elephant? They might at some point, but they mm. don't have to right now that's because right. they're still happily doing two doing weeks at two a time. two weeks at a time in big cities and big So theaters. traveling, doing one nights is hard on everyone. Sure. It's hard on us, it's hard on um, the traveling crew because they're you know they're up at 6 a.m. and back in the truck by midnight or mm. two or three or whatever and off to the next venue where they do it all over again that is a lot of hours you know the next day we may not have a show we get to sleep in right but that traveling crew doesn't get to do that so right. it's they do it it's what they do mm -hmm. it's hard yeah. But they're setting up tomorrow night in exactly. Dallas somewhere. How do people, can people get involved with this? How do they support the theater or is there? Uh, the most amazing and fun way to support the theater is to buy a ticket Just and come on ticket. downtown. Okay. But right. we too, Friends of the Strand, which is our annual fund okay. um, that helps keep us alive. If you have a business, you can be a sponsor. Okay. Um, come and sponsor a show, sponsor the season. And uh, we write grants, you know, we try and get great are those, money down uh, there. Are, are the performing arts a hard sell in Shreveport or people really want to get involved? It's kind of a mix. The people that love it, love it. Yeah. And if they don't, they don't. Okay. You know, they're not, they're just not going to come. And that's, so we're, we're here for those that do love it. Mm -hmm. um, another way you can volunteer if you want to is we have an all volunteer usher corps. Oh, all okay. of the people you see mm -hmm. in the little red jackets, those mm -hmm. are all volunteers. Okay. They're amazing, and we could not make that happen without them. And they get to see the play for free. If there <laughs> is a seat for them to sit in, yes. And if they're not, you know, super busy, sometimes mm -hmm. we're, there are other things going on, like we might be having, you know, while the show's going on, there still might be a reception going on or something, and, mm -hmm. you know, we have to have a few of them deal with that. So it depends from show to show. It's very different. What's the capacity for the theater for a show? We sell fifteen sixty. Fifteen sixty. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're we're pretty big for a town this size. Yeah. 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 And we're nice. Shreveport is so rich in performing arts because we've got our own symphony, we've got our own opera company, we have so much community theater. Yeah. Um, it is remarkable for. It, completely, the city. we've got ballet yeah. companies. You mm -hmm. know, we've got. It's not Shreveport well, Metropolitan Ballet does not crack her every year. People go every single year. Yeah. Is there a secret uh, box or a meeting room or the or the secret bar for the for the really big? Uh, we do. We have a the, what we call the, the chandelier big rollers, room. The high roll, the bougie people. The bougie <laughs> friends of the strand at a <laughs> certain level. Go, are you? Go, yeah. <laughs> friends of the strand at a certain level um, get a parking pass and a chandelier room card. And the chandelier mm -hmm. room for strand presented shows is open an hour before curtain during intermission, um, there is a super secret set of restrooms up there mm. that no one else uses. And you don't need have, them anymore now, though, because you <laughs> got right? the whole we third have floor. A, we have a bar up there, and we have chocolates and fruit and things, and um, God forbid, don't change 
what you put on the tables for them. Oh, they want the same thing do, every time. They huh? want a certain kind of chocolates. Uh. <laughs> Don't change them. <laughs> so what's the what's the minimum contribution to get to, to get 1500. to 1500 1500 mm -hmm. good all right. all right 1500 and it's great for me because at that point I get to I hate to say it this way but corner our people yeah. <laughs> you know they're in a small a small group of people um, and and I can thank find them and thank them when you've got 1560 people I'm never gonna find them yeah so mm -hmm. when they're up there, you know, having a cocktail before the show, I can stop and say thank you. And um, mm -hmm. by the way, there's no intermission on this show, just mm -hmm. so you know. So take a drink with you when you go <laughs> in the house, and yeah. um, you might want to use the, the brand new facilities well, before. <laughs> yeah. One last bougie question, and then uh, yeah, I don't know where our clocks at. Well, but we're about we got about a minute or so left. Have you ever had any big stars that are like, okay, and no brown M and M's in my room, <laughs> and no. <laughs> Brian Besides Adams. just the people of the boot, really? Brian Adams. Brian Adams, throw yeah. him right under uh, the he first was, or second We had a sold-out show in August. It was 104. He wanted us to turn off the air conditioning. Whoa, why? That's what I said. <laughs> why? I went to his, his manager, and I said, well, you know what? If he doesn't come back, that's not going to hurt my feelings. But the 1,600 people that are in there, yeah. I need them to come back. Yeah. And mm. it's 104 outside. I can't turn off the air conditioning. What? That doesn't even make sense to me. Why so on earth would he want to didn't make his, sense to any of us. No, he's crazy. Canadian. Oh. I don't know what that has to do with anything. Doesn't like that being. Yeah. He brought his own chef, and they cooked in the green room. So it was. All our Canadian mud bugs show. love the cold. Yeah. <laughs> it was a fantastic show. <laughs> All right, we're down to it here now. If uh, people want to check out your uh, your playbill or your uh, website. shows or Yay. okay, what's the website? thestrandtheater.com T-H-E-A-T-R-E -E. and if you're buying tickets please make sure you're buying them through our website because everybody's having problems with people that sell tickets to all the shows and that's not uh, yeah. where you need to be gotcha. so, to or you can call well. us we actually answer the phone nice there's seven of you right <laughs> there uh, that's give it give us your phone number 318-226-1481 okay and the website one more time the Strand theater.com t-h-e-a-t-r-e -E, because we're fancy <laughs> and bougie you got new, <laughs> bag, you got bougie. new bathrooms I'm, everybody's fancy all right that's going to do it thank you so much for being here thank you for having me enjoy the conversation it was Good a lot stuff. of fun we Thanks, learned Jennifer. more about the strand than we ever do including the bathrooms the bathroom very bougie Thanks for joining us for Toilet Talk. Appreciate it, and uh, have a good time, everybody.